Hey there, what's up? It's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of the 3C Show. And today I am super pumped to be here. We're gonna be talking about dodging and burning in Lightroom and Canva Raw for Photoshop. And I'm also gonna run you through all the settings you need to know to master the brush tool. So roll the intro. So dodging and burning. Why is dodging and burning so important? You might have seen plenty of pro photographers out there shooting and their images just have this magical final polish, you know, that you may be struggling to get with your photography. And man, it's it's something that allows you to sculpt the light. You know, back in the day when it was filmed, people like Ansel Adams and all the famous, you know, landscape photographer or photographers out there, they would dodge and burn. So they would lighten areas, they would darken areas of the image to help shape the light. And what it does, it helps focus the viewer into the parts of the images you want them to see. So, because the brightest thing in your scene is always the thing that stands out. But before we get started, I wanna jump into the Lightrooms now. And remember, if you are a Camera Raw user, the settings are all exactly the same for the brush tool, okay? So this one is for you too. All right, so here we are. We've got this beautiful image here. This one was taken, um, at a place called Dungog and it's something I've shot recently a beautiful country scene with these rolling hills and this dramatic sky works beautiful for a black and white it's something I shot recently for my team 3CX community and uh, man I did a whole masterclass in there on black and white if you want to find out more about that click the link below and go and check out our awesome community because it's so much fun all right now Let's jump into the brush tool. So one thing about this image is you'll see these rolling hills. I tried to get some nice side light, didn't happen, didn't get the definition I wanted along these hills. So that means that I'm gonna have to dodge and burn, darken bits and lighten bits, okay? So I can sculpt the foreground and the midground to add it, just to make it a bit more dynamic and interesting, all right? So I'm gonna click up here on the brush tool up the top. And if you scroll down to the bottom, I mean, these are all those top sliders here. That's all the basic panel and um, the other panels underneath. You know what all those sliders do, right? So the most important thing is, is to know exactly how the settings for the brush work. Now, the other important thing is too, once you get to know these settings, there's actually a brush tool inside the radial filter and the graduated filter as well. So it's, it's like, you know, once you master this brush, there's so much you can do when it comes to localized adjustments, okay? All right, so at the top, you've got A and B. So A and B are basically just presets for your brush. For instance, if I wanted to have quite a large brush and I wanted to have this one quite feathered, I could have that on, but on A. If I click B and I want a smaller brush and I don't want it as feathered, then Lightroom is gonna remember those settings between my A and B. That's all it is, okay? Now, the erase tool does exactly what it says. It erases things. So if I was to go in here and I'm just gonna double click the effects now, I'm just gonna open up that exposure there a bit and I click my A there and I'm gonna feather it. And if you use the right and left bracket keys, it also makes the brush bigger and smaller. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna paint a line across the middle here. And of course, it's absolutely terrible, okay? Don't worry about that. And if I hit the O key, that's gonna show me the mask of the stuff I just painted. Now, if I was to go to the erase tool, okay? I can just go ahead and erase parts of that localized adjustment, okay? So it is another brush, but it allows you to modify your brush strokes from the A and B presets, okay? So that's what the erase tool does. Super, super cool. Now, the next two are quite easy to get your head around. Okay, I'm gonna delete that one there. So size is, of course, just the size of the brush, just like I said, and you can see, you know, the bigger the number, the bigger the brush, but I do like to use those left and right bracket keys, okay? Oh, that's what I like to do for that. It just It's just a lot quicker using the keyboard shortcut. All right, the next one down you'll see is feather. And you'll see as I increase the feather, the little circle on the outside of my brush gets further away from the inner circle, okay? And that's the softness of your brush. That distance between those two is how soft your brush is. For instance, so we've got our mask on, we've got our size. If I turn that feather right down and I do a brush stroke up here, 
and I'll turn O off because we don't want to see that. And you can see it's quite a hard brush. If I was to turn the feather right up and then do that same brush stroke again, look at the edges here, way, way softer, okay? And that's what feathering does. I like to use a 50% or more feather most of the time, okay? It's, it's just, working with a soft brush allows you not to be as precise with your adjustments, okay? And that's something we'll talk about a bit later. So I'll just get rid of that adjustment now. All right, so here's the two sliders that people often get confused about, okay? And, and it's really easy to get confused about this because flow density doesn't really mean a whole lot. If I was to bump my exposure up to plus four, okay? And then I was to leave my density alone but turn my flow down to 50, okay? Every time I make a brush stroke, it is only going to apply 50% of whatever I've got at the top here. So in this case, it would be 0.2. So you can see if I do one, that's 0.2, and then again, and then it's getting, it's building on top of that. So every time you do a brush stroke, it's building 50% of whatever you've value you've got set in these top sliders. Okay, so this, it would be one stroke as plus two exposure, the second stroke adds, adds plus four exposure, and that's how it works, okay? So it allows you to, you know, build on your adjustments, and I really love that, and it works great, you know, around 50% or 25 to 50% or 25 to 50 value of the flow slider works great when you're building slowly on your adjustments, and I really recommend you use that. Density, on the other hand, it's a whole different story. Density is like an opacity slider, okay? It basically, it, uh, it's just like saying, all right, so I've got plus four exposure at the top there, but for some reason, I only want my density, I only want to add plus two to one area, okay? So it might be what you were doing is, you're adding an adjustment up here, okay? And it's gonna add plus two, and then you thought, oh, you know what, instead of creating a new brush, I just want to add plus four down here. And you can see what it's done. I bumped the density up to 100 now in that second stroke, and it's allowed me to paint 100% of uh, whatever I've got set at the top here, which is plus four at the moment, okay? And at the top, when I had density on 50, it only allows me to paint 50% and you can't build past that unlike flow you can't keep going over it it hits a cap okay and that's what the the density slider does it hits that cap so if I've got the density set on 50 then I can only ever paint 50% of what I've got at the top here okay so for this it would be plus two in the exposure all right so let's delete those so dodging and burning. So we want to lighten and darken areas, okay? So that's what we want to do. So I'm going to double click the effects here and reset everything. And I'm going to bump this up to around, say, two stops, okay? So let's lighten some areas first. I'm going to have a moderately sized brush. I'm going to have nice feathering there, you know, 75, 100, you know, something nice. I want it nice and soft. I want a nice soft brush here. And then I want my flow to be down, you know, around that 50% because I just want to build slowly, okay? And then what I want to do is I'm going to lighten the tops of these hills here, okay? Just along the tops of these hills. And you can see all I'm doing is lightening the top. And because I've got that lovely soft brush there, and because I've got that lovely soft brush there, you can see I'm not even being very precise with it, okay? And that's the thing. That's what that's what the feather allows you to do. You know, the feather and the flow turned down. That's what it allows you to do. So the feather turned up and the flow turned down. That's what it allows you to do. And I can just keep going over those areas and building on them, okay? And I might want to bring a bit more light into there. And that's looking pretty cool. And now, say I want to darken things down. So I'm just going to hit the new brush now. And I'm going to bring two stops under. Okay, so 0 0.2, around 0 0.2 under in my exposure, and I've still got that lovely feather, and I've still got my flow turned down, and I'm just gonna darken the bottoms of these areas, okay? Just darken the bottom, okay? And maybe I wanna darken across the top of those hills there. So now, if I was to turn that brush tool on and off, so you go, that's before, that's after, you can see it's added this light to areas of my scene, and now makes it stand out, and you've got these beautiful crisscross, you know, diagonal lines across the scene of these rolling hills. And that's what dodging and burning is. It's all about sculpting your scene so that you can tell the story you want to tell with your image. And this I want to see. Look, there was beautiful light and look, you can see these crisscross lines that go across the scene all the way to this lovely light, you know, this lovely light in the sky and this dark, you know, beautiful mountain range of Barrington Tops in the background. 
and man, I tell you, when you start to master the brush tool, there is so many uses. As I mentioned before, you know, there is the brush tool. If I click on the radio filter here, put a radio filter on, and you can see the brush tools come up and it allows me to do localized adjustments inside the radial filter because maybe it's spilling out in the wrong place and maybe I want to add a little bit somewhere else. And the same with the gradient filter. If I was to put a gradient over the top here, you can see there's a brush tool inside the gradient filter as well, okay? So it's really, really useful. And remember, you can do this in Camera Raw, you can do this in Lightroom, and dodging and burning is something that you need to have, you know, have spend some time with. You know, there is trial and error, and there's no like, you need to do it this way, you know, sorry, you need to lighten this part, you need to darken this part. You have to remember that you are the artist, and it's important for you to make those decisions and tell the viewer where their eye is gonna go. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Man, I am super pumped. You know what? It's winter, the middle of winter, and I think I'm gonna go for a swim, because it just the water just looks absolutely amazing. All right, so get out there, dodge and burn, and sculpt the light in those beautiful images images of yours and man leave some comments below share me some love if you're loving these tutorials you know share it comment you know like it wherever you're watching and viewing this tutorial and uh, you can also get in touch with me in any of the comments just reply to this if you got it in an email and I would really love to hear from you all right remember stay awesome stay inspired and I'll talk to you again really soon peace <laughs>